God bless you, Susan Waldrop, March the 3rd, 2016. This is a very serious day that we are living in. The Holy Spirit has been waking me up throughout the night, and I woke up seeing an iPhone with the apple bitten out of it. I could not help but think of how these little things I don't have an apple because the apple in a way it's very funny you know I went through a stage and we had Macintoshes they called them in those days now they're calling them something else so I I have an Android but these Androids these apples are for this generation because this is one of the final tools the enemy is using to deluge our minds with hypocrisy, lies, schemes, all of the incantations, the atmosphere, electrical pulses. It is trying to send through these things to us to downgrade us, you might say. The enemy is trying to downgrade us, stupefy us, mesmerize us, get us to not see with our eyes wide open, but for that we should put on these glasses that we would see a virtual reality not reality as it is, but the reality that the enemy himself wants to create and fill our vision with his vision until he totally destroys us. And so this is what I, the Lord woke me up and I was seeing several things. I'm seeing uh, several things in the news that is very disturbing. I was seeing that the grid went down in Syria. I was seeing how when you just watch someone without the vocals running through the television, these people, these news industries are desensitizing. They're trying to desensitize us. The women are wanting to look like men. The men are wanting to look like women. They're giving women prime time. Now, I am not saying that I am a, uh, against women equality. I am simply saying that the enemy is trying to reverse the view. Reverse the view. He's trying to throw everything upside down. And at the same time, keep our eyes covered so that we will not see what is really going on and so that it will dull our senses so that everything will be acceptable. It will be okay. It will be all right. As I looked at my lipstick this morning and I put it on and it's the color nude. You see the devil is trying to desensitize us and make us think that it's okay. Everything is okay. It's all right if we have a, a, a woman that is in the public eye that has done promiscuous things and now all of a sudden she's put in a respectable position. It's all right if the president has had two previous marriages. It's all right. Everything is okay. Everything is okay because you see the normal has been lowered. What should be acceptable has been lowered. It's okay if there are idols in the home of those that are running for office. It's okay. Everything is okay. We should not look at these things. But yet when I had a dream of one of these candidates that had idols in his home, and I saw the charisma around him, and I saw that the world loved him, adored him, and that the whole world was moving in his direction. And I said, yes, I see. You're very, very, very charismatic. You have much favor happening, it would appear, around your life. But then the Lord got in me and spoke directly to this candidate and said, but what I do not like. You see, this is what the Egypt, this is what the Israels 
Israelis did. This is what the Jews did. They had gods. They had Aaron make a god out of brass, was it? Forgive me, I don't remember. But it was. A, they took all of their jewelry. They melted it down. They made this image, this golden calf. And I look in the home of this candidate, and there is all gold. Nothing wrong with gold. And I am not condemning a candidate. I am not endorsing or not endorsing a candidate. I'm going to ask the Lord who to vote for. But let me tell you, the Lord got in my spirit in this dream that was very, very real. And I'm going to share something with you for prayer. The Lord guided me in this dream. This was quite a while ago I had this dream. Not very recently. I just have not shared it because some things you leave to the Lord. But I feel it's important to share it because the word, the message the Lord gave me this morning is very, very, very clear. A storm is coming. Some storms are already here. Some storms have been brewing for 10 years, 20 years, 30 years. There are many, many storms, and we are at the door of the storms. So let me finish the dream. I spoke to this candidate, and I said, yes, I see all the favor, I see all the favor, but what I do not like is the idolatry that is in your home. The, gods you have created. There is not one Bible. There is not one cross. There is not one picture of who your Savior is. And at the very instant when I said these words, this candidate, his image began to crumble and get dark and darker. You see, all of the glitz, the glamour, the beauty dissolved, dissolved, dissolved until he crumbled right before me. And there was nothing there. It was just as I looked right through. He was gone, gone. I woke up. When I woke up, <clears throat> I felt very strongly. This man is the Antichrist. This is what I felt when I woke up. I'm not saying this is that. I'm just saying this was the dream, and it was a very, very strong dream. I know uh, I wanted to, I'm going to move now from that because this whole thing and the, was this whole theme of how the enemy is trying to take over us captivated Susan this morning. God showed me all of these things that we need to guard our mind, our heart, our emotions. We need to not be led by emotions. It's all right to be passionate for God, but don't be passionate for any man. Don't be passionate. And this leads me to another thing that happened the, last night. Don't be passionate by what man says a movement is going to be, even if it would be a Christian movement. As one dear sister that I dearly love, I've known for many years, a real professional called me last night and she said, Susan, I've been following this individual who I happen to know. She said, there's going to be a huge movement in Southern California. I'm coming back and I'm going to be part of this. Everyone is saying this is going to be a huge movement. Everything inside of my spirit listened. But knowing the person that is leading this movement, as I do, I have had this person on my program. I have a few questions, I'm just going to say, because she, she continued to tell me who he has been aligning himself with, who he has been chumming up with, buddying with. And these people that he has been buddying up with are not role model Christians by any mean, I would say. In fact, these are mega Christians that are very wealthy, nothing wrong with money, but the love of money, the twisting of money, the, the divorcing <clears throat> in these circles seems okay to do this. 
and then continue on. And I think to myself, this person is aligning themselves with idolaters, adulterers, fornicators, princes of darkness. And then they're going to say they're going to have a big revival. Is this going to be God's revival is my question. Or is this going to be the revival of just another setup? Just another positioning because celebrities are there. Money happens to come in. People are drawn. The sheep is drawn because of the celebrities that will be there. You see, people care more about celebrities than they care about the presence of God. They think that there's going to be something happening they don't want to miss. But let me tell you, you're not going to miss God right where you are. You do not need to go to a huge convention to think that you're going to find God there. You can find God right where you are. God knows right where you are. You don't need to be led astray. You don't need to be pulled by something that you think is magical, magnetic. No, the only person that is magnetic that we need to be drawn to is the Holy Ghost, the Father, God, Lord Jesus Christ. You don't need to go to those things. I've been invited to several. You don't need to be drawn where something is <clears throat> being spoken of by lips of those that have joined themselves with idolatries. No. So I was looking in the Bible dot knowing dash Jesus dot com. Very nice website. Storms. 37 Bible verses about storms. Exodus 9, 24. So there was hail and fire flashing continually in the continually. There was hail and fire flashing continually in the midst of the hail, very severe, such as had not been in all the land of Egypt since it became a nation. Exodus 9.24, a storm is coming, a storm is coming. Matthew 8.24, and behold, there arose a great storm on the sea, so that the boat was being covered with the waves. But Jesus himself was asleep. You see, the storm was raging, but our Lord, because he rules everything. He is the master of everything. He dominates. The waves do not dominate him. The storms in your life are not dominated by the evil. If you have given your life to Christ, Christ dominates over your life. You don't need to worry. You can sleep. But yet he says, be wise as a serpent, gentle as a dove. I will give you the eyes of the eagles. Do not be fooled. Do not be led astray. Luke 8, 23. <clears throat> Was it? But as they were sailing along, he fell asleep. And a fierce gale of wind, a fierce gale of wind, descended on the lake. And they began to be swamped and to be in danger. Acts and Acts twenty seven fifteen and when the ship was caught in it and could not face the wind, we gave way to it and let ourselves be driven along. Storms more storms Job thirty six thirty three its, its noise declares his presence, the cattle also, concerning what is coming. Acts twenty seven eighteen. The next day, as we were being violently storm-tossed, they began 
to jetson on the cargo. Isaiah 4, 6. There will be a shelter to give shade from the heat by day and refuge and protection from the storm and the rain. God Almighty will protect you from the storm and the rain. The Holy Spirit will protect you from the storm and the rain. Though a thousand fall at your left side, 10,000 at your right, forgive me if I'm not quoting this exactly right, but basically it's saying, it shall not come nigh thee. It shall not, for you are rooted as a tree. You are planted. Though the wind come, you shall not blow over and fall over. For you are rooted on the gospel, the real gospel, the real Jesus not just some Jesus that people talk about, not just some Jesus that they have made books about, but you are rooted in the real Jesus. The real Jesus that is coming back. The real Jesus that says, Lo, I am with you always, even unto the end. That is the Jesus that you are with. That is the Jesus that will protect you from the storms, the rains, the floods. <laughs> the rains came down and the floods went up. The rains came down and the floods came up. The rains came down and the floods came up. But the house on the rock stood firm. Build your house on the Lord Jesus Christ. Build your house on the Lord Jesus Christ. Build your house on the Lord Jesus Christ. This is what we need to do to build our house. Build everything around us. Everything that comes up about us every day. We've got to know Jesus Christ is for us. If Jesus Christ is for us, then who can be against us? Who could be against us and stand? No one. But behold, the storm comes. The storm comes. <clears throat> I want to thank Lou and John for your donations to the ministry. Thank you so much. I am asking the Lord, petitioning him, is this exactly the completion of what he has this ministry doing or does he want us to step into another arena what so say you father god what so say you for the present time he has me speaking to you these are his words this is his time for you for us hello susan john writes you are great. I have known John for many, many years. John has followed the ministry. <clears throat> Excuse me. He is, um, I believe, in Ireland. Forgive me if I'm not remembering correctly. He has followed the ministry for a long time. Long time since being in touch, but happy to see your sight again, servant of the Lord. You are a blessing to me. You said some time ago about reversing the direction of that which was about 17 years ago, it is happening. I want to be an evangelist and see miracles on my mobile phone. Why not? Internet and in presence and inherit your mantle and see souls saved. Please pray for this. He goes on to say some more edifying things. Thank you for your counseling and prayers that have been, that have brought me thus far. It is good to see that there are still, still some evangelists about in these dark times. These dark times when storms are all around us. We still must stand, no matter what, we still must stand. We still must proclaim from the rooftops, from wheresoever he has you. This is your platform. This is where you are. This is who you're speaking to. Whoever he puts, 
in front of your face, wheresoever he has you. For you never know where God is going to actually place you from day to day. We are not promised years. We are promised that God was with us. Very best for the future. See you in glory, John. Johan writes, Remember you prayed for David, the husband of Evelyn, of Chosen Explosion Ministries. In one of her videos, Evelyn mentions that David is much better. Now I see, now I saw David for the first time give a Bible study in one of the latest videos. And I made a comment to which I got the following reply. Yes, David is doing well. Thank you so much for your prayers and Susan's. David has been in the hospital in almost two months. I know that doesn't sound like much to most people, but for a year and a half, he was in about twice a month with pneumonia. It is a miracle. He is still with us and with all he has been through. His strength and energy is miraculous, is increasing amazingly. He is regaining normal life activities. The uh, stens stensuous of his bronicle is tur turning around, which is miraculous. Thank you, Jesus. This is Jesus. Jesus, we thank you, Lord. Many miracles we are seeing. We are thanking God for a total and complete restoration of all that Satan has stolen from David and our family through this illness. I know it is coming again. Thank you so much for your love and prayers. Don't let up just yet. I received an email from Stephen for whom you prayed also. This is the second praise report. He had a persisting gallbladder problem even after surgery. He replies with this email, which I will translate below. He put down the foreign language that I could not read to let me see it in Stephen's own language. Then below that, John, uh, Stephen wrote the, um, John, Johan wrote the interpretation, which I will read now. Uh, hi, Johan. I cannot always react immediately because sometimes I am away for several days and don't have access to the internet, but I just watched the throne room of heaven, and which is the title I did of this video where I prayed for him, and was surprised by your prayer request to Susan for me. Thank you for that and for her healing prayer. I think that I am healed and I keep my fingers crossed. Greetings, Stephen. We thank you, Lord. We praise your name. We give you all the glory in these things, Father God. Salaskas writes, I see the Holy Spirit of God in you, Susan. Praise the Lord. Also, Susan, if you could please keep me in your prayers. I have surgery on my neck, March 15th. I have to have two bad discs removed from my neck and replaced with uh, cadaver bones. This is serious surgery and it will keep uh, and it will help knowing that my brothers and sisters in Christ are praying for me. Thanks and may the Father continue to bless you. Father, we pray for this one. We pray, Father God, that this surgery is led by your hands, Father. Put your hands on the surgeon's hands, Lord God, in the name of Jesus. Let everything be perfect, Father. In fact, Father God, let this doctor be amazed, is the exact wording I'm seeing, amazed. I see that after this surgery, he is going to be telling you, I was amazed, amazed, amazed. You see, sometimes God puts down his handwork so amazing. He does something so amazing that even those that might not be walking in him must admit with their own mouths, amazed, amazed, I was amazed. So we thank you, Father God, that your healing touch is with this one 
and that father <clears throat> there will be a testimony as we are praying now for your touch in this operation we will hear back this one will write back and say susan it was exactly wonderful the holy spirit was in this operation totally the doctor even witnessed that it was by your hands father god your hands father god that this happened so miraculously we thank you for your healing touch now father god in the name of jesus from eli hi susan will you pray for me i need an answer god knows what is about from norway Father, we pray for El Eli in the name of Jesus, Father God, that you restore this situation. I, I'm, I could be way off. I'm just speaking by the Spirit, but I see because we prophesy in part. If anyone tells you they are 100% accurate, you know, I have my feelings definitely about this, my opinions, because none of us are Jesus Christ. Now, when the Spirit does move through, sometimes, yes, it is 1,000%. You know exactly. But many times, God will show you things. You, so you begin to speak in faith what God is showing you. So I always say, this is what God is showing me sometimes when God shows me these things. But I am seeing that there has been pain, emotional pain in the back, in the history. There's been some instances and there's also a relationship issue. There's a relationship issue. So we thank you, Father God, that you are healing. It's almost like you're wanting to know, should I stay or should I go? What should I do? So, Father, you know the answer to this question. We ask, Father, that you make it very plain, very plain, like the, the, the nose on the face, Father, that you make it very plain in the name of Jesus to show this one your perfect will. And the word that I feel like I would say is continue to go forward. Look not to the left, look not to the right, but continue with God in the in the Tantien, in your gut instinct, which is where the placement, the Holy Spirit, he says, out of your belly shall flow rivers of living water. And um, that's what I say to you. Flow with what the, the gut is, because that is the Holy Spirit. And we thank you, Lord. Love Elias writes, pray for me, please. My name is Luz, uh, Lucy, L-U-I-Z-A. Louise, Louise. Father, we pray for this one. We pray, Father God, for this impossible situation that only you know how to fix, repair, restore. Put back together better than new for i see pieces of glass all broken it's almost like a vessel i'm seeing that you feel like a vessel you feel like your vessel which is you has broken into a million pieces and you don't know how to put the pieces back together again but god says to you i'm putting my hand over you and i'm going to put your pieces back together again and when i do this it's going to be as though it was never broken at all because God is going to erase, erase, erase it all away. Thank you, Jesus. I'm hearing a few. Do this one, another one. Susan, I'm hearing a few people on YouTube saying they're being shown or have been shown they weren't worthy for the rapture because of a small unforgiveness or something like that. Not necessarily living in sin. I almost despise that scripture now. Pray to be counted worthy as it instills so much fear where does one draw the line how do we know we're going to make the rapture i want to say this <clears throat> people it says in the scripture work out your own salvation with fear and trembling now that doesn't mean that you're so afraid of god that you're afraid to even come before him 
because he says, come before my throne with boldness also. It says, command ye me even also as well. So what I say to this whole situation about the rapture and how people are bashing, the church is bashing, bashing, bashing. You know, people have this opinion, they have that opinion. People want to jump up and, and they want to show their power. A lot of people, you know, they want to show their power by showing someone how many scriptures they've memorized or how much they feel that they have the special interpretation for the scripture I say this to you it's very simple people try to make it way too complicated people try to get in your face and tell you how to live your own life run your own life they try to put you down they try to uh, run you try to tell you what to do how to think erase all of that you simply say Jesus I love you I want to go in the rapture, Lord. I want to go as soon as you come. Whenever that is, Lord, I want to go. I want to be those that are counted, the ones that have the oil in their lamp. And I'm now trusting you because my heart is pure coming before you because I ask the blood of Jesus over my life. Don't walk away from me, Lord, as I know you won't because scripture says that. Don't leave me, as I know you won't, because you say, Lo, I am with you always. But Father, I thank you that you will bring me on the first ship out, whensoever that is, I'm trusting you. And I'm going to be looking for you every day. I'm going to keep my mind stayed upon thee. I'm going to keep sober and diligent, doing everything that you tell me. Because you are my real home, Lord, and I'm looking forward to going there. And that's it. That's what I say to that. Don't listen to so much static in the electricity in the air that you become weary. Jesus doesn't want you weary. Jesus doesn't want you to be led to the left, to the right. He just wants you to keep your eyes focused on him. Trust him and believe him. It's very simple. Trust and obey. For there's no other way to be happy in Jesus than to trust and obey. Um, saved in Christ, what a blessing and encouragement you are in Yeshua's name. Can you please pray for me? I have had stomach issues in his name. Amen. Father, we pray for saved in, in Christ. Father, we pray for this stomach issue. Father, just fill this one with your presence right now. For as your presence is totally consuming all of the discomfort, all of the issues, all of the things that are trying to agitate this stomach, leave, bend your knee now in the name of Jesus. It goes. We believe it by faith in Jesus' name. Thank you, Lord. Good morning from Thomas and Constance. Intercessory prayer request is requested for Leonard and his girlfriend who is shacking and fornicating and need to know Jesus. Lord, we lift up Leonard. We lift up this girl as well, Father. Bring them to the cross. You know what it's gonna take, Lord. We speak that you would move on their lives this day, if you have to scare the hell out of them, Father, whatever you have to do, scare them, but Father, keep them protected, but awaken them, Father God. Awaken them from this stupefying place where they find themselves at. This rebellious spirit, we rebuke it in the name of Jesus. This demonic assignment, we cancel it. In the name of Jesus, and we give you all the glory. Now, Father, for Thomas and Constance, we thank you for their lives. We ask you to bless them, heal them, Father, any physical conditions that I might be picking up. That in your presence, everything that is discomfort leaves in Jesus' name. In Jesus' name, total healing in Jesus' name. I'm feeling the word headaches. I have no idea, 
But I just thank you, Father God, if that is anything, that it goes in the name of Jesus. Leon, good day. Hope you are doing well. I've been searching for answers for a long time and would really like to know, what is God's plan for my life? Would you mind taking time to pray for me, please? Kind regards. Yes, Lord, we pray for Leon. Leon, thank you, Lord. Leon, thank you. Father, we ask that you show up right where Leon is. I see like several opportunities that's been offered you and you don't know which one to do. So I'm going to say the one that you feel the most peace in is where I would say to move. For many times as you take that step of faith is the substance of things hoped for yet unseen. But as you take that step of faith forward in the one that you have feel the most peace about that is the direction in jesus name thank you lord hello susan i wanted to know if you could ask the lord for a prophetic word for me i'm ex extremely t trying season right now thank you jen lord we thank you we thank you i just see frustration i see you sitting at a desk i have no idea what you do and I just see you're just like way beyond exhaustion, mental exhaustion. Your body is physically exhausted. And it's almost as though you're pouring out sweats of blood. You're sweating blood because of the emotional exhaustion. Also, there's been a relationship issue. I, I am believing is what God's showing me. So, Father, we ask that your hand cover this entire situation. And there's also a thing with bills I'm seeing. I could be way off, like I say, but bills. And so, Father, we lay all of these things at your feet. At your feet, Father God. We lay all these things at your feet. And we thank you, Father God, that the relationship is healed. The bills will be paid. And also, Father God, for this, this uh, I, I almost see that you're working that you're, you're bringing in a basket. Uh, you know, I could, like I say, I don't know, but this is what I'm seeing. And so, Father, that you will correct this situation and heal this situation in the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. Thank you, Lord. I'm seeing some other things I'm not feeling that to share. So, thank you, Lord. From uh, Rainy. Hello, Susan. I'm asking for prayer for myself. I feel like the Lord is getting me prepared for something. The Holy Spirit has been drawing me back into the Word of God. I still have a difficult time with prayer. Every time I watch or read something, it's always about God's love or about demons. <clears throat> excuse me. And how they can trick us and how we have power over them. My husband does not believe in tongues or laying on of hands or miracle healings. He says they are of the devil, Jesus. But I feel that I am being drawn to learn about this for a reason. I feel like I have to hide things from him when I am learning or else he will judge me. I believe that God is the same today, yesterday, and forever. We never change. We, he never changes. That's right. I want to be in his will and learn. We have pretty much just lived a life to ourselves as Christians. As Christians, I question his salvation. Not maybe his salvation, but I'm questioning his desire, you know, his zealousness for God. Because when you're really saved, you're drawn by instinct to want to be as close as you can to the Lord, to have as much about Jesus as you can. <clears throat> there is no line that you draw. There is no more religious spirit is what I want to say. I just see that he needs to be set free from a religious spirit, a spirit of where maybe people have said to him, well, this, you know, what they think about the word. We don't go to church or have fellowship with other believers. I started watching your website. I try to watch every day. It lifts me up and keeps my eyes on the Lord Jesus. Do you have a prophetic word over my life? Just wanted to be an obedient daughter. God bless you and the work that you are doing for the Lord. Please pray for my husband also that the Lord will reveal himself to him and soften his heart to the work of 
to the work of the Lord. Father, we pray for this sister. We thank you, Father. We, we thank you for her love for you, Lord. We thank you that you're moving in her heart. You're drawing her, drawing her, drawing her to your light, your light, your love, your presence, your reality. You're drawing her. You're, it's almost like that scripture, as a deer pants for the water, so I hunger for thee. Well, Father, we ask that you do this in her husband's life. Father, we ask that you do this in his life. That this hunger is also, Father, flowing over him. He will be drawn by your spirit, which is the only one that can draw. We cannot draw ourselves. Only you can do this, Father. So, Father, we ask that this last prayer request that I read today, you move on, as with all of the others. But, that, Father, there is a reason that this one was last. Because there is someone else watching. You need to have a closer relationship. We pray together as a body now that you are drawn closer, that desire to be more closer to Jesus. We pray for you. We pray for the one that you are naming now that needs that closer relationship. We thank you, Lord. We give you all the glory. Thank you, Lord Jesus. We lift it all up before your eyes. We place it on your altar. And Father, we believe you are moving and doing these things in Jesus' name. Thank you so much for those that have given donations, Lord. Let it return 1,000-fold to them in Jesus' name. Thank you for your prayer requests, your praise reports. I love you, and I am praying for you. And we shall soon be home. We shall soon be pulled out of the storm. But it is important that we continue in Jesus' name. Have a blessed day. I love you.